I never thought I would be pondering whether ransomware could be white hat, but now I am thanks to Kulova, uh, which is something I spotted uh, courtesy of Emery, who was very interested in it and another ransomware story that was far from white hat uh, a little earlier on called Popcorn Time. Uh, why don't you describe both of them to us, Emery? Sure. So I'd like to start off with the popcorn time ransomware. So um, mm -hmm. our good friend uh, Steve Gibson over on Security Now had an episode where he talked about this on Security Now episode 590. If you would like to go listen to a more technical breakdown of it, I highly recommend it. Um, but so this was the coolest, scariest thing I heard the entire time I was off the air uh, last month in December. Popcorn time is a piece of ransomware that was discovered that... Um, is fascinating. So ransomware was the scourge of 2016 um, and 2015 and continues to be a huge threat uh, in this year as well. Effectively, it is uh, malware that um, encrypts the contents of your computer and then requires or presents a uh, message to the user that says, hey, if you ever want your files back, pay us you know, X amount of Bitcoins and we will send you the decryption key to decrypt your files. This is really novel and interesting for a lot of ways. Um, one of the reasons I think it's interesting in particular is the fact that um, for the first time, you know, paying a ransom is guaranteed to get you the stuff back. And so it's been enormously successful in that regard. So Last uh, month, a piece of malware, a piece of ransomware was discovered in the wild called Popcorn Time. Um, not to be confused with the um, Netflix meets Torrents open source software that we talked about last year um, of the same name. This piece of malware uh, of ransomware infected your system, encrypted your files, and then presented you with a message that said, you know, as expected, if you'd like to see your files again, you can pay us one Bitcoin. It also gave a second option for decryption, and that's where it gets utterly fascinating. The second option for decryption was, look, we understand $780, that's what a Bitcoin was at the time, is a lot of money. There's a nastier way of, pay of getting your files back, and they actually use the term, the nasty way. Um, <laughs> and that is, you can send this link to multiple people, and if two or more people follow this link, install the, so install the ransomware themselves, we will know that, and we will then send you a decryption key. Oh, <laughs> that is the wow. most evil thing. Yeah, wow. most evil thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so it's 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 leveraging the fact that ransomware is enormously successful because it works and do, it does exactly what it promises. It then it, it then solicits users to you know get in on their conspiracy and uh, send out that message to other users and to spread the infection. I, I predict that this will be enormously effective as well and very, very evil. Um, another aside to the whole popcorn time ransomware that made it a little interesting um, is the fact that the message uh, that was presented to users said that um, the creators of the ransomware are Syrian refugees, or not refugees, they're, they're Syrian computer science students, and that the uh, quote-unquote proceeds from this ransomware attack would be used to provide shelter and food to those in need. And, you know, I quote, you know, we're really sorry that we have to, you get, you know, that we have to get you to pay this, but it's the only way for us to survive. So... So, <laughs> so <laughs> this, I mean, are, have you have you fake news to that last part or no? No, no, that is um, that that's a screenshot from uh -huh. the actual uh, the message that appears on it. Um, so, if you look in the show notes from yeah. uh, Steve Gibson's from Security Now's episode, they have an actual screenshot of what's presented. And yeah, yeah. on the left is you know the normal way, the nice way. On the right, it says the nasty way, and then underneath it, in a little green box, it says that yeah, you know, we're a couple of computer science students. I lost my family and my little sister earlier this month. Um, Siri's in a lot of trouble, and this is the only way that we can get you to pay stuff. So yes, so that's what they. So said. that's that's a whole nest of really fascinating, terrifying issues, right? This week we have another article from Bleeping Computer that says this Kuvula, uh, Kuvlova, Kulova. Sorry, Kulova ransomware uh, does something a little different. So this piece of ransomware infects your computer, encrypts your stuff, presents a message that says that um, if you'd like to get your data back, you've been infected with ransomware. What you need to do is you need to read two articles about how to avoid ransomware. And they will then send you the decryption key that will decrypt your files. And so, in a way, this reminds me of the computer worm from 
I want to say four or five years ago that made waves by um, infecting routers that had known vulnerabilities. Yes. And it would infect and spread itself through routers with known vulnerabilities. And then all it did, it it didn't steal any information. It just infected itself and then spread. But before it left, it would close off the known vulnerabilities that the manufacturer had left in place. It's what we're seeing is this sort of bizarre... I'm not going to call it white hat by any means, but it, it, it's nothing we've ever seen before. <laughs> and uh, it's very, very weird. And so, you know, when I'm thinking about these two articles together, yeah, the the idea of like white hack ransomware or activist ransomware, mm-hmm. um, you know, what is there ransomware that can be spread by, you know, if you want to decrypt your files, show us, you know, or send a Bitcoin to this charity, you know, well, wow. They, it, yes. It, it, Fundraising <laughs> you know, slash terrorism. educational ransomware. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When we're no, talking so about cyber yeah. warfare yes. and, you know, the effect of, you know, like when terrorism was originally, you know, created as a way of uh, enacting, you know, international dialogue and, you know, political change and military change, you know, it was a way of recognizing that this thing works and it's evil and it gets right to the heartstrings of the people that are concerned about this and paying attention to it. Man, ransomware works. You know, it works yeah. really well at getting people to do what they want you to do. And it is fascinating and terrifying to see how this stuff is changing. Um, so uh, th- this totally blew my mind out of my face onto the screen. I had to wipe. It was, yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a messy image. Uh, yeah. It's still a crime, though, uh, no matter yeah, no, what. Totally. The, uh, yes, no matter what. Uh, uh, higher motives may be involved in the ransomware. Ransomware is still a crime, uh, at least in yeah. the United States, and I assume elsewhere. Uh, Jack, anything to add? Well, I'm super terrified right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's really. I, I mean, I haven't looked very much into this, but <clears throat> the, it's very strange to me because. Why would you break so many laws? I mean, does a ransomware, when you download it, do you agree to terms of use that says we're going to lock this mm-hmm. up? And, you know, I, I wouldn't think you would. So I don't mm-hmm. I don't really see the motive for for uh, for, for doing this. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if perhaps the motive is actually that there is malware on there that stays on your computer. Um, and somehow, you know, you, you, your, your data is unlocked for you, but there's also trackers or something on there. I really don't know. But oh my it's... God. Uh, you realize what you just came up with, though. You came up with the "quote unquote" white hat ransomware to educate people about uh, what's hiding in terms of use, because oh. if they did <laughs> have to actually do a legally enforceable click-through agreement. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, a video came. A video. There's yeah. a great company. There's a great movie called uh, "Terms and Conditions May Apply" about this issue, and uh, yes. a video game company out of the UK actually did that, and they said that if you click on this, um, you you uh, give us your soul for all eternity. And I think like 13,000 people clicked on it over a few days, yeah. and then they, you know, they said, "Ah, big joke." Um, and then, you know, I, I don't know what they did with all those souls, but uh, <laughs> but uh, that well, that, had, that, yeah. it, that it's not quite the same. But um, but they did, you know, there there have been some stunts like that that are pretty funny. Right. So I'm not a criminal, uh, you know, my, my criminal law is very, very rough here. And I know that we don't have any criminal law attorneys on the uh, show today. But my question, you know, when I saw this, um, the popcorn time, I immediately did think of rap contracts. And, you mm-hmm. know, whether this was, um, you know, is, is that a contract that you're getting into? Is that a terms of service for, you mm-hmm. know? Um, right. and, and also, you know, is that a conspiracy then if you are agreeing to it? Um, you know, where uh-huh. does the solicitation end, the conspiracy begin? Uh, and obviously, yeah, so it's it's a crazy world out there, guys. 